Hey everybody, welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 49. Today we are going to look at loading in uh, disk textures. So to get started, let's first add a constructor to our texture class that takes in a file path uh, to the texture. And let's generate this definition. Now when we take in um, the path to this texture, there something that we'll need to know is, is the texture a DDS file or is it some other way? Because if we want to uh, generate it from a DDS file, we use a different function in the DirectX toolkit. So let's go up to our string converter, and we're actually going to rename this to string helper, because instead of just having conversion functions, we are going to put in um, some helper functions. So let's do a replace, and replace everywhere that uses string converter so now I use string helper. We are going to add two functions here. Now the first one is to get a directory from a file path, and the next is to get a file extension. And the one we're going to be focusing on right now is get file extension. But let's go ahead and implement both of these. So let's create the definitions and go down to the CPP. All right, so for the get file extension, uh, what we will do is we will just find the last period in the file path, and then we will do a substring for everything after the period. So if we have uh, file.png, we should just be substringing out the PNG, and this will return that. For the get directory from path, it's a bit more code, but it's very simple. We are going to be looking at the last offset of a double of a backslash or have a forward slash because you can actually use both in a file path. And if neither of these are found, um, we'll just return a blank string. This shouldn't ever happen. If there is no backslash, we will just return the uh, position of the slash. If there is no slash, we will return the position of the backslash. And if they both exist, we're just going to substring from whichever one is further along the path and get the directory that way. Now you'll see uh, max is underlined here. We need to include algorithm so that we can use that max there. All right, so now let's go back to our texture CPP. What we're going to do here is we are first going to set the type and then we are going to check the file extension and see, is it a DDS file? If it is, we will call create DDS texture from file and just pass in our variables here. And if that fails, then we are going to initialize a one by one color texture with the unloaded texture color. Otherwise, if it's a uh, not a DDS, then we are going to call create WIC texture from file and same deal, if it fails for some reason, we will just initialize the one by one uh, color texture and return there. Now we need to include two headers to be able to use both of these functions. Let's go to the top. We are going to include WIC texture loader and DDS texture loader. So now we have our texture class set up for this, but we need to set up how we will load this inside of our uh, model class. So let's go down to load material textures. So before, if there was a texture, we were just using the unhandled texture color and we were returning here. I'm going to move this to outside of here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to say if the material textures size is zero, then we will put in that unhandled uh, texture color and push it back. So if there are no textures at all, we will just put in that unhandled one and push it back. So for when we actually have textures, you need to keep in mind that we can have multiple textures for the same thing. So like we could have multiple diffuse textures and so on, and they might be blended together. So we're going to have a for loop where we go through uh, the texture count, which keep in mind, we got the texture count up here from get texture count. And we are going to go through each texture for this material, and we are going to get the path to that texture. And I here, this is just the index when we call get texture, since we can have multiple textures in that material, and then the texture type 
which we are only doing it for diffuse textures right now, needs to be passed in to get texture as well. Next, we need to determine what the texture storage type is. For the nanosuit object, it's going to be a disk texture. So we are going to store the type. We need to actually uh, create a function to determine what the texture storage type is, where it will take in the scene, the material, the index of the texture, and the uh, texture type. So in this case, this diffuse is what we would pass in for the texture type. So let's look at creating this new function. Let's go to model header. And just before our load material textures, let's add a function that returns texture storage type, takes in the scene, the material, the index, and the texture type. Let's create this definition. We are actually going to go ahead and implement determining all the possible texture storage types. So the way that this will work is First, we just double check the get texture count, and this should never be called if, if there are no textures, but if it is for some reason, we will just check if it's equal to zero, return texture storage type none, which we handled in the last tutorial. Next, we are just going to get the path to the texture, and then we are going to convert it to a string. Now for the texture path, if the first character is an asterisk, then this is a uh, index embedded index uh, texture. Now we are not going to support non-compressed until I can find a 3D file that asymp can support that has a non-compressed texture. So we just have an assert down here in case that does happen. But if uh, the height is zero, then it is a compressed embedded index texture. So we will return that storage type. Next, we need to check if the texture is embedded but not indexed. So if it was not indexed, then we are going to try to get the embedded texture from that texture path. And if we do get something back, then it must be an embedded texture. We check if the height is zero, in which case it would be compressed. So we would return that. And if it's not zero, we don't support that because I still haven't been able to find a 3D file uh, that can uh, be imported by asymp that has a non-compressed texture. And last, if it's not either of those, we'll check if the path has a period in it, in which case it could be stored on the disk. So we say, all right, if there is a period inside of the texture path, if it's not equal to impose, which it would be if it wasn't found, then we will return texture storage type disk. Otherwise, we will return none if no texture exists, and somehow we get down here, which this should not happen. So let's go back to where we were calling determine texture storage type. And this last part's pretty simple. We are going to say, have a switch case for all the different storage types. If it's a disk, then we are going to store the full file path by taking the directory plus the file path. Then we are going to create a texture using that file path. And then we are just going to push it back into our material textures and break out of the switch statement. Uh, we need to add storing the directory for this model. So let's go up to the model header, and we're just going to add a string for the directory and just default it to a blank string. Now when we go to load model, what we are going to do is we are going to say this directory equals string helper, get directory from path, we will pass in the file path. So now, let's see, are we still loading the nano suit? Let's try running this and see if our nano suit textures get loaded in or not. Looks like I forgot something because they are showing up as gray. All right, well, I'm going to debug this and I'll just be right back. Okay, so the issue was in my get directory from path uh, function and the string helper, I had uh, minus one for all the substrings and it turns out I shouldn't have had minus one. So if we go to test this again, all right, you see now we get our nano suit guy and that's all cool just to verify if we take a look at the orange disk te disk texture at fbx that should also load in correctly all right and yeah there is our orange and it's spinning in circles and it looks great so that is all that we are going to cover for this tutorial in the next one we are going to look at loading in the orange with the embedded texture.
So currently, if we try to load this in, you'll see we just get red because it's unhandled. So, yep, that's what we're going to cover in the next tutorial, and thanks for watching.